Hey, what's up guys? John here. We are in the biggest rental correction we've ever seen in America. I'm talking 20, 30% rent reductions incoming in 2024. Apartment rents have been cooling off sharply for several months now. The rental housing market is not stable. It's driving prices down. So if you're spending, let's call it two grand a month in rent, imagine your rent goes to 1400 bucks. That would be a really big relief for you. It would be a devastating blow for that landlord, considering the fact that borrowing costs, interest rates are going up, insurance and taxes are going up, and so is competition. And so when you start to look at all of this, what is it presenting? A massive opportunity if you're a renter to go out there and invest in distressed real estate, because these banks, these lenders, these property owners, they're gonna be desperate to unload this inventory. I'm gonna break down the facts and show you exactly what's going on and why I think we're walking into the greatest transfer of assets in American history. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate the people about what's going on in the real estate market, in the rental market. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session. If you have bad credit, you want to position yourself and take care of that so you can go out there and close on a really, really good real estate deal. Take a look at this. So this came out January 25th. Just for context, dates are important. This all just came out. So in Atlanta, rents are already down 4.5%, 4.5%. Generally, real estate investors in Atlanta are buying deals at 5%, 5.5%, stabilized. So if they're buying an apartment building and rents are, you know, already at market rate, they'd buy it and it would, you know, produce a four, five, six percent return in that range, depending on the pocket in Atlanta. And so when rents fall four and a half percent and insurance and taxes go up, it's a really big problem. But this problem is only just beginning. If you look at another market, for example, in Nashville, right, there's more than 16,000 vacant apartments in Nashville and another 18,000 in the pipeline. But the demand for Nashville multifamily remains to be seen. I'm already hearing of these landlords offering three and four months of free rent to fill these units. When have you ever seen that? Even in 2020, during all the chaos, you're seeing two months free, you know, little incentives like that. They're way more desperate today than they were back then. And you might say, John, not in my market. If you go and you look on Zillow and apartments.com and you start to look in your market, you're gonna see a lot more inventory. And I believe the smart move is to renegotiate your lease if you have a lease coming up. That landlord does not wanna lose you. If you pay rent on time, it will be smarter for that landlord to try to make a deal with you than to have one or two months or three months of vacant rent or to have to reduce their rent. Because when you look at what's going on right now, $2.7 trillion in commercial loans is gonna get rolled over the next couple of years. And these landlords need to keep these units full. If they can't, it's gonna be harder for them to get a loan. Meaning that one vacancy, it's not just a loss of $2,000 or $3,000 or $4,000. It's a much greater loss because the bank is gonna look at how much money that building is bringing in versus their cost and ultimately decide if they're gonna get the loan or not. And if they don't get the loan, the investors are gonna have to get the keys back to the bank. We're already seeing this all throughout Austin. You know, Story Built just gave back a $2 billion portfolio. You're seeing this happening in many markets right now. Landlords simply just can't hold on. So those vacancies, it might just be one or two or three, but these add up very, very, very quickly. And the landlords, they don't want them. So trust me, if you have an apartment, there's a really good chance you can renegotiate your upcoming lease. Take a look at this. So rents fall nationwide. This is all in the last 24 to 48 hours, right? I mean, it's shocking. Even in markets like, uh, I mean, you're talking, some of these markets are going down 8, 10, 15, 20%. Austin's around, uh, depending on the pocket, you know, we're seeing numbers between 14 and 20%. So look at this. Rents in Boston fell 6%, while rents in Vegas and Los Angeles dropped roughly 5%. So... Here's context. They, they mention another, they say this one market, they're actually seeing rents uh, going up. And this market was uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. They mention this and they say Providence, Rhode Island, you know, rents have actually increased. I think it may, might be uh, right here. Yeah. Um, Providence, Rhode Island. They say rents actually went up. But when you look at Providence, Rhode Island, you can see clearly that what's happening here, there's a lot of affordable units. And so what's going on is people are moving where it's too expensive and they're going out 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. And so they'll go and save four or $500 a month. So these more expensive units, the $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 units are going to get so much harder to fill. And at the same time, some other really unique things are happening. 
1.2 million new apartments. That's the number of new rentals that opened in the United States during the last three years. But another 1 million is set to hit the market through 2025. And this accidental landlord situation could push millions, I'm talking millions, of homes to become rentals on the market competing with these already, you know, this already high supply of new apartments that's coming on the market. So homeowners who held on to 3% mortgage rate are becoming accidental landlords. Here's how big this problem is. It's blowing up all over Reddit. Three months ago, seven months ago, I mean, all over. They're saying, you know, what should we do even if there's a profit with no tax, keep the cash flow? Uh, what could I do to give tenants basically notice? Now, when you look at this, this is, this is where this whole thing comes ahead. So nearly 40% of all U.S. mortgages were originated between 2020 and 2021. So some of these are going to re, be refinances, sure, but even if they're refinances, it doesn't change the dynamics. So in 2020, there was 5.64 million homes sold. In 2021, there's 7 million. So collectively, 12.64 million of these properties either were refinanced or traded inside of that period. Now, when you look at what the average down payment was during that period, between the ages of 24 and 32, and 33 and 30 and 42, it's between eight and 11%. A lot of the people that were buying homes are somewhere in this range, you know, work from home, taking advantage of the work from home trend. And so when you, and the relocating different areas. And so when you look at what's happened to the real estate market, what you're gonna start to see is you're gonna see millions of these people unable to be able to, they're not going to be able to sell their homes. They're going to be forced to rent them out and to become an accidental landlord to compete with all the other landlords that are out there. And so when you look at this, since peaking in, four, in the height of the market, $479,000, 479500 right now, it's about 431000 So if you just divide the two numbers, what you're going to see is that home values have lost almost 9%. And so if the average down payment was, call it 10%, Basically, a lot of these people are at a break even. That's not taking into consideration the cost of sale, which is ballpark between eight to 10%. Realtor fees are between five and 6% plus closing costs and transfer taxes and any other problems that may come up during uh, inspections that usually the seller may credit the buyer. So you start to look at this situation, you have a lot of sellers, a lot of property owners that could be underwater on the median price home by 30, 40, $50,000, meaning they'd have to come out of pocket just to be able to leave the deal. So what's gonna happen? Well, according to big tech, what they believe is going to happen and what they're doing is tech layoffs balloon in January. Now you have to realize tech companies, they are in business because they're great data providers. They provide this data to advertisers. They accumulate all this data on their users. And what they are accumulating and what they're doing is they are saying, hey, look, we think that there's going to be significant downside in the economy. That's why we believe it's smarter to lay off. We believe AI and technology and different ways in which we can save money will be useful. And we're going to start leaning into that. But what they're doing is they're signaling to the world that the job market is going to go through a really, really big change. And so when you have all these things occurring, and even when they say, yes, home values presently are $431,000, what that would actually mean is based on an 11% down payment, which would be this, which would be the higher end of this, say you're 40 years old and you're in this range, this would mean a monthly payment of $3,749 per month. That's at a 7.5% interest rate. And that is, uh, you know, if you have the average credit score in America is 698, which would be 7.7. .7. So if you have a better than average, better than average uh, credit score, you are now looking at uh, almost $4,000 per month. That's, you know, you factor in upkeep, you know, cost of uh, maintaining, maintaining the property. If you're a renter, you don't have to take care of that. But if you own a property, you're going to take care of it. You're talking four grand a month. How many people are going to be able to go out there and buy a property for $4,000 a month? Especially when you can go rent one for $2,000. 2100 rents are continuing to fall in an affordability crisis with record high inflation what do people do they try to save money that's what they do and uh, i think this is going to present a really 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 big opportunity from renters to be able to go out there and start to buy more property buy maybe even their first home a duplex a triplex a fourplex to go out there and invest i believe we're going to see millions of people being forced to liquidate their properties and at the same time Many developers are getting into these office residential conversions and their you know, White House is bringing forward 30, this is on their website, bringing forward $35 billion in available lending. And this is at below market interest rates to, uh, 
to convert these commercial properties, these office buildings, to residential. Now, some people say this is going to be way too expensive. It's not viable. It's not going to... Maybe. It's possible. But depending on the zoning codes and the building codes, which are enacted by local and state governments, uh, those, th that could all change, right? This could all change. We could see these buildings, these office buildings, getting completely demolished and being rebuilt with this funding. We don't know how it's going to work, but one thing we do know is that inventory is about to get out of control in America, and supply and demand dictate pricing. With this, big wake-up call coming for a lot of leveraged landlords, a lot of real estate syndicators, and a lot of people that are really to their teeth in debt that have to refinance over the next couple of years. So if you are thinking about investing, now's the time to learn your market, learn your landlord-tenant laws, understand what you're doing, and go out there and do it to the best ability that you have. You also want a really, really, really good plan to how you're going to make money on the first deal. One thing that all smart real estate investors have in common is that they make a lot of money on the first deal. The first deal has to be a home run, not a base hit, a home run. And that will give you the leverage to go on the second deal, on the third deal, on the fourth deal. But have that game plan. Now is a great time to learn and study and save money. If you need help fixing your credit, you know, we'd love to help you. At my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item under credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for Monday. Catch you in the next video.